Welcome to a very special Thursday night uh, pre-recorded edition of uh, the Parents Lounge. We're pretty excited. Hello. Right. Uh, I'm Jamie Kaler, of course, as always, joined by Jason Galwin. Going. Dave Keckner would say, going. Uh, we have a fantastic show for you tonight. So um, thank you guys for all the support, by the way. We have been, uh, people have been reaching out to us to be on the show, as is the case with tonight's show, of course. Um, and we thank you all for sharing and uh, being part of this this group of parents who who need constant support, right? Yeah. And if you are watching us tonight, drop down to the share button, share this out to your people, let them come join in the fun too. Uh, especially any parents you know who might be hanging on by a uh, thread. Which is um, awesome. Yeah, if you're on YouTube, definitely subscribe so you can see, because sometimes we do these random shows that are off night, like this is a Thursday night show, our normal show. Uh, make sure you join us every Tuesday, 7 p.m. when we're live. Um, we sometimes let fans come in and... and air their grievances of uh, of parenting, which has been pretty fun. Uh, we, on- we know you guys are hurting out there. We know. <laughs> Dude, everybody's hurting. So we had Dave Keckner on the show, and he had done this other show called Bitter Homes and Gardens. Uh, and, and so the two creators, Fielding Ed Lowe and Larry Clark, um, two fantastic actors, writers, producers who make that other show, reached out and said, hey, we're parents. We would love to be on your show. And so we said, uh, yes. Yes. So, um, well, they, uh, they also hold the, the an honorary distinction in the parents' lounge now. They yeah. are the very first actual married couple to appear on the show, but also together. As you're watching, you'll realize uh, this is hilariously funny. Oh, these people are really married. Wait, is this therapy? And will they make it? Um, yeah, it's a it's a fantastic relationship, man. I, I we didn't know what to expect because we'd never really met them, and it was super fun. Uh, the show, if you get a chance, Bitter Homes and Gardens is on YouTube. It's fantastic. Google it. They have all kinds of celeb people in it, but it really is about their relationship and their life as uh, two kind of creative people who are also uh, parents. Yeah. Um, so it's super fun. Uh, do us a favor. Be sure to subscribe, love, uh, review if you're on iTunes. That's uh, specific. And um, we are going to play our opening credits, which will give you guys just enough time to go make a delicious cocktail so you can sit back and enjoy this interview in all its hilarity. Um, Jason, anything else you want to share before we... Uh... Absolutely. Tuesday night, we have a very special show for all you, uh, you know, 90s kids who were grew up on TGIF on, on ABCs from Step by Step. Uh, Christine Lakin has joined us. She's also, you know, been on Family Guy. She was uh, the newscaster on Family Guy. She directs on the Goldberg. She's been on pretty much a lot of stuff. Super funny. And she's awesome. And uh, the um, and that will be March 1st right there. Christine Lakin will be joining us. Um, it's always great. I really enjoy having, honestly, kind of enjoy having the moms more than I enjoy having the dads because I kind of see everything from the dad's point of view. And every time we have moms on the show, I, I end up leaving going, oh, yeah. And it kind of changes the way I behave towards my wife a little bit where I'm more like typically like, come on, just pull it together. And then I start to hear stories and I go, all right, maybe some kid gloves are in order here. I have been flat out schooled by the mom. <laughs> we, have been, we have been totally schooled. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, tonight's show, uh, the creators of Bitter Homes and Garden, uh, Fielding, Edlow, and Larry Clark. And let's hit those opening credits and get those cocktails poured. You got We could have homes on separate cools, go dive in grease with squids. Could have been so bleeping rich, but instead we had kids. They won't smile for a photo, they won't eat the food we choose. That's why we're heading to the parents' lounge to drown ourselves in booze. Every day we're more exhausted, we haven't slept in years. They hit me in the nuts so bad, my eyes filled up with tears. And yes, we'd like to fake our death go off of the grids but the truth is we are softies and we truly love our kids so join us every tuesday night to laugh at all our pain 
evening in the parents' lounge is the cure to staying sane. Hey, you guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, yeah, awesome. Bitter, Bitter Homes and Gardens. We had Dave Keckner on the show, and that's, I think, how we all kind of found each other. But I, I kind of know both of you from the stand-up world and the acting world. So and We know you guys. So this was just thank you for yeah. having us. We were so excited. Uh, honestly, I'm blown away that you guys uh, work together and are married. I mean, how my wife and I can barely survive just living like as roommates. So I don't know how you guys do it. Uh, we we have a team of people rooting for us in a tribe, about 7.5 couples therapists, different healers. Um, and it's day to day. I mean, I always say I'm married for today. I mean, I think we are an exception. I mean, <laughs> basically it started years ago where we were like, we, nobody would believe how we argue. And uh, like, cause we argue in, in real life and it's kind of funny. But we've also had horrible arguments. Just we've said horrible things to each other. Yeah. And yet somehow we've stayed together, <laughs> you know, over the like, years. Like we I don't... mean, and we're opposites. And that's another reason. Like if she was like me, I don't think we would have survived. Yeah, really. if I was an Irish bloviating blowhard who just gave himself compliments 92% of the day, yeah. it wouldn't that work. That sounds familiar. Like I know somebody just yeah, that rings a bell. Who do we know like that, Jason? <laughs> yeah, right on. And, it seems familiar for some reason. Maybe it's you fair. found people you can watch the Super Bowl with. Irish? Maybe, yeah, Irish. yeah. Can you? Can, I need well, him out of the house. She <laughs> grew up very repressed, Upper East Side Jewish. They don't argue. They get quiet and they cut you off. We do slow simmering resentments and then order takeout from Zabar's. And his family will just scream into the night. And I'm like, oh, yeah. What we, is there left we, to say? We would have holes all over the walls in the house. People punching, getting drunk, crying. I mean, that was every day when I grew up. I mean, that was. Wow, we have a lot in common, man. That's the. Uh, <laughs> where, where did you grow up, Larry? I grew up in Maryland, in the suburbs of Maryland, Baltimore, around that area. And you didn't have to tell them Upper East Side. So. Up, up front like well, that. You're I, 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 try, I try not to lead with that. because well, You lived in New York all your life. Oh, New York City. Seems That's a like, very... Seems like he's really controlling this interview, and I just want you to know, we know you're the boss. So oh. just Listen, he didn't uh, have to tell us anything. You just <laughs> opened your mouth. It all poured out. We, yeah. I knew it was up right east side. I knew the deli you liked. The whole thing fell out. Okay, okay. okay. So he no. knows the deli. No, these, these are yeah, sorcerer profit. Smarty. I'm from uh, Boston, but my wife's, we met in New York, in Manhattan. So, oh, that's uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a big, it's so funny. Growing up in Boston, people always taught me to hate New York. And they're like, yo, you know, New York sucks or whatever. And then you go to New York and you're like, this is the greatest city on earth. I'm not doing <laughs> <anything. laughs> yeah. I couldn't get there. The Yankees, but the city's epic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but growing up in the city, like you just get so jaded. I have this joke that I do where like by the end of kindergarten, you feel like an emotionally broken 45 year old divorcee. Because <laughs> it's like, you've done it. Like I've well, done it. Like, no, no, burrow, no burrow unturned. Like, I don't I know how anybody raises a child in yeah. Manhattan. Well, you you oh, see we, we were the subway, right? The third greatest in the subway. Yeah. You know, in Baltimore, we used to go up to New York because at 17, I mean, New York had no rules back in the 70s and 80s. Like, no. it was famous for a place where you could go and you could do anything. So we would openly walk around drinking beers and you jump into a cab and the, and the cabbies don't, were all... Don't, don't try to be so cool, New York. Like, I'm I, telling you, that's why we came and visited. I was fingered behind the Met at 14, okay? So I just okay. think viewers need I'm to know, is about... this for kids? Is this PG-13? No, 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 there are no kids who watch this. Show. For parents, it's for parents. But there are parents of 14 year olds who are going to the Met this weekend. Yeah. Like, yeah, hey, you're not, stay inside the Met. You're not going out right. the Met. Could I get like the address for that? that? Named after me, thank but you. You know that teenagers use the term fingered. I'm not you're asking. I'm not adult. asking you to finger me. I'm just saying that's I'm what happened saying, to me. Fingered, like who says fingered anymore? Oh my god, this is really what their listeners want oh, to hear about. Were you is fingered the, the other day? It's like, oh my god. I was, you guys came from from as 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 a as an extension of Kackner, so this is exactly what we expected. Oh, <laughs> We love the Kackner episode, by the way. I heard him tell the story in his 
stand up, but it, it's he went on such a deep dive with the two of you, and it was riveting. That whole episode, it was amazing. We were shocked. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> I don't have an editing switch. And even I was like, oh, wow, dude. And we were live. It was live. The whole show was live. And I was like. It was, inc was incredible. I've never felt so self-congratulatory and grateful and blessed that we have one child. Like he yeah. kept saying it's same thing. One, five. I'm like, no, no, no. It's not the same. <laughs> and, you know, listen, I've acted with Dave a bunch now. And I had to say about him as an actor, he is so prepared and he shows up so focused no matter what you're doing. Uh, I, I was really, cause she wrote, you know, Bitter Homes and these crazy monologues. Thank you, Larry, say. thank uh, you. Okay, I just said you wrote it. And uh, <laughs> that's all I said. Um, uh, and I literally was like, you're gonna ask Dave Kecker to walk in here. Like, and just like, we're not having we're a lot of time. He gave him monologues and, and crazy monologues, hard things to say. He came in, no judgment, off book, and was like, let's go, roll the tape. And I kept saying to him, Dave, like he's one of our, Amer he's like our great improviser. You know what I mean? I'm, and I said, say whatever you want. I, I, and I really mean, I'm not a precious writer. He goes, Fielding, you took the time to write it and I'm gonna say these words. Yeah, couldn't believe it. And I was like, it was better than childbirth. It was better than my the birth of my child. Wow. Dave, you're telling me he wants to say my Can word. Can we quote you on that? Yeah. Okay. To your child. How, how old is your child? She's nine. nine. Going on 10. Nine. I have an eight-year-old. I have an eight-year-old. Oh, so, um, a boy or a girl. I have two girls, an eight-year-old and a six-year-old. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I guess they're not uh, like yeah, we were just talking about this is that my daughter now, she's, and I've kind of created a monster, like I'm, I'm Frankenstein, because she's, yeah. she does things to me because I am kind of a smart ass. And I was telling Jason that she's been like, She's been manning me or broing me a lot lately. She goes, she broed me. She broed me, man. I go, hey, no more cookies. And she goes, one more, bro. And popped it yeah, in her yeah. mouth. And I was like, it's dude, don't bro me. Yeah. She um, bros. We have such a little Disney hooker. We created a monster. She just goes, I want heels. I was like, the new show daddy's doing? She's like, no. Like, she wanted Vegas stripper. Like, she's one raspberry cognac away from, like, the Bellagio. She does. Like she walks around here, and, and I'm like, "Who does, are she, you?" She does. She go up to me, and she'll be doing the dancing to a hip hop yeah. video from highly suspect um, rappers, uh, hip hop. She artists knows WAP. We who, can, she knows WAP. I can't. Believe, I was like, that word just came out of your mouth. She went, "Sorry, Daddy," and so she <laughs> like censor the word as she's singing it, knowing full well. I'm like. What are you singing? We're about? all in trouble. Singing like what, we're in what, trouble. What are you doing? Like Why I was a whore, but in high school. Like it's already started, kind of now. Like well, we've heard stories about you at the Met, so we know. <laughs> I mean, we know what's going down. With I know. you have a little backstory there. Where are the yeah. So you had a you had a small digiting incident. Uh, I did. Yes. Someone, yes. Someone, someone lost a digit. a digit. Someone lost a digit inside me. Someone oh lost well. A digit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but you had two, so you're the hero, Mazel Tov, that you're able I'm to. I'm the hero. <laughs> yeah, I'm a oh, hero. We would, know. we fully know, we would not survive to. Our marriage would not survive to. Like, we can do a web series and a child, and that's it. That's more, that's more than most, I would argue. Yeah. Um, I love that you guys are honest about, you know what's funny? We talk about this, too, is that the people who are, like, my wife and I, my wife has said things to me that I'm like, Wow. I can't believe you have said these horrible words to me. But other people who I always see who are like, we're so happy. He's the rock. We love each other so much. And I, he completes me. That's a murder suicide waiting to happen. Oh, yep. Bodies in the trunk, police called to the house, thrice divorced, shut the fuck up. The fa look at the Facebook posts. If I you know. look at the Facebook posts, you're like, you're fucking miserable. So I will tell you this. I will say this. We had a friend over, and I won't say her name, but she's an actress. And, and now her, her husband, I'm not going to tell you what her husband does either, but I, 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 I could not believe the conversation we had with her here at this table. Remember? She the said, Jeannie? She, what are you doing? Okay, I'm just joking. They can edit it. That's okay. not funny. Jeanette. I'm not going to say that. I can't say the story now because you said her name. Okay, whatever. Her last name, her last name is uh, what? You didn't say the last name. Uh, There's yeah. a thousand. She's not going to listen. Anyway, she said she's been married for 20 years and she had farted around her husband. <laughs> and I was like, are, are, you, are you kidding? She's like, I wouldn't know what to do with myself if I 
had gas. And I was like, you've done this for 20 years. How have you pulled this off? Like, are you, and he doesn't do it around her. And they've had like three kids or something. And I was like, that's, that's, I, what? I like, think you get- came right to me. I, I, I let that one, that ship sailed first three weeks we were together. Exactly. Like well, first, yeah. Jason, it's a first date. That, that's how they christen the date. <laughs> And you go, hey, you want to order some, and then you go, we did, uh, we did have Mexican on our first date, too. So it's like a mating call, it is just get it out. Although, I think we probably would have fucked more had I farted like, on a certain amount of time. I feel like because there's a certain point where Larry would look, I'm gonna say this during the pandemic. No, we no, were, we were watching 30 for 30. And I put my hand down my pants because I, my bare hand, I, I thought I started my period, I wasn't sure. So I just reached down and checked, and he goes. Did you just do what I thought you just did? And first of all, I was like, it was a I mean, half. She goes down and then she just like. And I was like, no, I didn't. And I go, it was a half, master, half <laughs> masturbation, half period check because we we're watching Christian Leitner, thank you, who's pretty hot. And he's like, do you still love me? Like it was. Oh, no, I was like, that's, I'm, the, I'm, that's one of those disgusting things I've ever seen. <laughs> I was like, oh, so if you did get something down there, it would be like, oh, look, I'm. I think it's, I'd go in the red tent and I'd it, bleed. It's beautiful. But I was like, wow, you I, care so little. So little. At that point, I I cared so little. Yeah, no, she did. He would check his Apple Watch. No, it was during, aggressive. No, that was aggressive. He would check his Apple Watch during dinner. I wanted it to be a secret girlfriend. Just let it, let the affair happen. Let me go. Nobody was screwing during quarantine because no one wanted the fucking Stop die. Stop shouting at them. They're our only friends. You know what's sad? The the most disgusting part about that whole story was the fact that you were attracted to Christian Leitner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what an yeah. asshole. Marks, maybe. Grant Hill, obviously. Bobby Hurley, he puts in the effort. But fucking Leitner? Nobody likes Leitner. Good yes. Lord, woman. She, I also, Elijah Elaj- Elaj- Robert Horry, I think those are wonderful. Yeah, sure, I'll give you Elijah Juan. I'll give you Akeem Elijah Juan. Yes, Robert Horry. Big game, I'm, Robert. Absolutely. I have. I'm, I'm, I'm a little messed. I'm a little. You know, a lot up. of women yeah. like. Damn it. You have serious right? issues. I do have serious no, issues. I'm no, serious guys issues. like that are attract a certain type of women. They're just. Su- I know he would. I mean, I know he wouldn't like he's me. He's a he's a psychopathic narcissist. Like and he's, I was very drawn to him, and I would love to just have a cup of Sanka with him. And you, I know he wouldn't like me. I think Ray Romano would say that I have very interesting energy. I will say that. I think everybody would say that. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't and think I think you're interesting is exactly on point. You have an interesting <laughs> energy to you. <laughs> Thank you. But Thank I think you. a lot of it is your name. I mean, Fielding Edlow is one of the all time. It's a Harry Potter character. It's the person who runs the Sherlock Holmes Museum. It's a professor at Colgate. Can't quite get Ivy, but Colgate definitely. Oh. Maybe Colby, maybe Brandeis, it's but so not funny, Ivy. Right? It's like a weird sex move that Oprah just has, yes. like a drag name for a toddler. But, but no, we have a collection of haunted artifacts in your basement. Yes. I do. I have some little amulets, little um, shrapnel. But yeah. um, it's interesting because so field. I didn't just pull fielding out of my ass. It is my middle name. But um, she does pull things was, out of her it ass. Was by the way. Well, she at least she at least checks it and smells her finger. <laughs> That's I different. Think I told that story. I, I hope that's edited out, by the way. No, okay. none, none of this will be edited, by the way. Not <laughs> one. There's not, I am not going to take the time or the effort no. to edit anything but put credits in. Okay, so basically, if I didn't come from a family of self hating Jews, I would go on stage and be like, hello, everyone, I'm Feldman Edlowitz. Like it got changed. And of course, Larry's like, you would kill us, Feldman Edlowitz. You'd yeah. be a lot more successful. Much more. And actually, I'm like, you would. You would. I, I, everybody, Feldman and Lewis. <laughs> so yeah, that's, I'm a gerund, I'm fielding. Of course, he's always, my. so my first name's Elizabeth, because there's a circle of trust here. Sure. And so when he it's a great no, no. When she moved to Hollywood, she uh, reinvented herself. She dropped her first name. I was fielding before. It just shows that you don't listen and you're a narcissist, because okay. okay. I dropped it way before. All right, I've been with you forever. Uh, but, um, uh, so she came here and she's been fielding. So I met her. She's fielding. So whenever I go home, everyone's like, "Hey, Lizzie. Hey, Elizabeth." Like everyone in like New his York. stepmother at our engagement party goes, "Who's Elizabeth? Who's everyone talking yeah, about?" Yeah, her. And everyone in the past yeah. calls her her old name. And it's my first name, but anyway. Ex- exactly. And then what she'll say to me now, she'll go, "I hate the way you say my name," because I'll go fielding. 
And she goes, stop it. I hate the way you say it. He doesn't like Larry. I, he thinks he's a Ross. That's what he thinks he is. Do no, you that's, think that's a Ross? No, that's my mother's look. I can see him as Ross, actually. I can see Ross. Um, Bruce. I would give him a Bruce. Yeah. He has a bit of a gay, like he's a gay vibe. He I has a little bit of a gay, gay vibe. But, but a, not a gay vibe, but a guy who goes, he'll go to a musical. Like, he'd see Shrek the musical with me. Yeah. That yeah. Guy. I started in musicals. Of course you did. That's I'm why. Thinking, I, I just, yeah, you know, that. He was an understudy in the full Monty on Broadway. On Broadway. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. You never went on. Listen, we I didn't read the bio, but we I have the bio. It's don't worry, no. It's all a little bit like Nick Frost and Simon Pegg had a baby. <laughs> Is that me? I think that's you. I, 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 I'm Nick trying Frost, to Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg. Explain. Yeah. Do you mean more like a Stellan Skarsgård or the whole cast yeah. of Chernobyl? Yeah. Yeah, like I can see whole him being a in the, in the a whole movie. cast of Chernobyl yeah. is, I Justin. think, what he looks like. <laughs> That's what he looks like. He does, by the way. I love him in Chernobyl. It was so good. Chernobyl. We can't watch anything because he's like, I don't know why I didn't get seen for that. Like he'll say that about the wire. I'm like, he's like, why wasn't I seen for that? I'm from Baltimore. I do. Listen, Baltimore. the whole black. There were a lot of white roles. Well, I, so I can't watch The Office, the American Office, because they wouldn't even bring me in. It was really. You should have been they the brought star. Me in. They brought me in, and she looked at me and she went, Okay, thanks. Can I tell you something, Jamie? I would have watched that show so much more had you been the star. You absolutely should have been the star. And that's, I'm infuriated for Listen, you. I don't even want to be the star. I wanted to be the dude by the copy machine, just going, What's happening? I just could have done that. I don't, yeah. If I you look you at the original the cast, roles. the original cast, I mean, these were some strange looking individuals that they put on that show. You had to be very. Unique. I love the British one so much that the American one was a little too crazy for me. The British one was so based in reality where you're like, they were all real characters. Right. And oh. the American one went a little crazy. But No, 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 no. Not a little crazy. I hate to say this, but I don't think The Office was funny. Oh, God. I, I think that the original Office. <laughs> Ricky Gervais is the gold standard, and they actually um, were making a comment about society and working in offices. I mean, it had all these amazing kind of like, uh, it just was, and the American version was like, what the, it was like a joke fest. But Jamie, it was I a joke wanted, fest. I wanted to see at the park, because I do, I mean, I think it's a funny show. I, I just never watch it, but I think- and dropping off a mimeograph or whatever. I, I just never so maybe the next time. I, I, I didn't I never watched what's the that, Larry, besides Bitter Homes and Gardens, what's your favorite uh comedy show? I love extra uh, extras. Anything with Ricky Gervais, Afterlife, I kinda like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. I, I you know what we watched twice through, and I don't know yeah. if we should be embarrassed. We laughed out loud at episodes. Episodes. We loved episodes. We loved oh, yeah, a good show. episodes. Love. I love it. Twice through. I mean, no, I we weren't it. learning about fracking or, you know, the, you know, panda. It was like episodes. I, I have a diverse kind of like, uh, yeah. I mean. We loved Call My Agent. Call uh, we, my did agent. you guys see uh, that? We, we like me. We like stuff that's inside. Like, yes. Yeah. When the girl in episodes, the studio girl's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah she's we, know you. we know that person. But, yeah. We know, and it, oh, it's just intoxicating and delightful. Yeah. Do you watch, uh, what, like, how many times did you see Encanto over the holidays or Sing 2 with your daughter? I watched Sing 2 once. Once. We once. did Sing 2. And she also did, so any parents listening who are like, God, I'm not doing a good job, just know that we let our nine-year-old watch Squid Game. And what's even more disturbing? No, I did is, not let her watch. Okay, fine, game. I did. And she goes, "I loved it." And I go, "What did you like about it?" She goes, "The violence." So that's a problem. <laughs> I can't believe she Jamie's watched horrified. it. Jamie's no, horrified. No, I can't believe she watched. I sat with my five-year-old and we watched Jurassic Park. Claire, Hannah can't watch. The older one can't. Anything where it's like even got a like a heavy music like dun 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 dun. She's like ah, she gets freaked out. And really? the five-year-old sat on my lap, watched the dinosaur eat the guy on the toilet, flip him up, and swallow him. And she was like, oh, she That's it. interesting to me, because I would have pictured Hannah as the one that would have no. watched it. And it's it's flipped. That's interesting. She's super scared. I think Claire almost watches them to torment Hannah. She oh wanted to watch Harry Potter, and, and Hannah is too scared to watch Harry Potter. So Claire will deliberately, when Hannah's in the room, go, we should watch Harry Potter. Like, she's... 
Fucking oh, so you, you got to put everything in the safe. You got to hide we everything. Also made Claire is going to get everything. We want to make. Everything. We made a mistake. What? That what? I said, listen, we're going to start showing you some of the classics because you're watching all these kind of crap TV shows. Uh, and I was like, you're going to start watching some of the classics. And so I made the mistake of putting ET on. Oh. He was. And that was a mistake. A fucking mess. Because and my I was our like, kid, do you have emotional problems? Our, I mean, it's not real. Our kid. <laughs> I mean, this is the same kid that watched Squid Game, and she's like, cool, hey, everyone's head is blown off. Right. I mean, everybody dies. And we put on E.T., and once that <laughs> once that shot of E.T. by the river when he was gray. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, what happened to E.T.? <laughs> and, then she, and then she's crying, crying. Sobbing, sobbing and, and yelling at us, how can you do this to me? Yeah. How can you do this to and me? And then going... Is he gonna die? Is he gonna die? And I go, no, he's a puppet. He's a puppet. It's not real. So she's she's a very odd, like, and then I tried to have a whimsical afternoon. I showed her Splash, and then he got angry because I thought Splash holds up. It's a great there's comedy. There's a lot of sexual Splash. Splash holds up. Splash yeah, holds but up. there's there's all so you're so things. your littlest one, that's Claire, Jamie. And so she's the one who can she's just a little Disney terrorist or can handle everything and just to yeah. provide. Yeah. They're like night and day too, and they're 18 months apart, and they're both crazy redheads, and um, they like night and day. I guess it makes it more interesting because yeah, I mean, that's we, Irish. Yeah, red, that, red, red, yeah. red hair. Oh, Irish. Redhead. I'm a redhead. Our dog's a, a puggle. He's a redhead. And you know that's a recessive gene. They say that's going to disappear in about 20 like no 30 more years. No more ginger. There will not be a no ginger, ginger in the world. Did no. you know that? I did. It's actually scientific because if uh, it's recessive, so you need two redheads to mate. But the problem is, if uh, two fire patches touch, they could spontaneously combust, combust, right? They blow up, and so it's it's a really a tricky thing to try to mate two redheads. Whoa! So, oh, do your your daughter is there like a family circle jerk to brave? Who <laughs> said she is she's brave? She was brave for yeah. That we, her yeah we is her name brave? Merida. Merida. We have a shrine Merida. in the room. Merida. Yeah. Yeah. A circle jerk uh, is, another, is another phrase. It's one of it's one of her favorite phrases. Did they do they not get that right away? Uh, I mean, did it not make? I a mean, point? but you but you know, fingers circle jerk. I'm uh, I'm at yeah, this point. Really, I, need, I, need, I need to say, today's his birthday, so I have oh, to. Oh, happy birthday! Happy thirty sixth, buddy. <laughs> That's what she wrote on the card. Our daughter wrote happy thirty sixth. She doesn't count. So so That's, like, That's where the joke needs to go because it's obviously. What, 67, 68? You know what happened to me once at my gynecologist, not to again talk about my pussy, but I'll never oh. forget two years ago, she goes, we're talking about age, and she goes, 36 is the age that a woman looks her most beautiful. And I've never been able to unhear that. And I am not 36 anymore. So it was like, fuck you. Like, what? Oh, would you stop? What do you think? Okay. No. This no. Is no. Elizabeth. I, I love Elizabeth. Her. I'm sorry. Can we edit? We're gonna edit that, guys. No, we're gonna actually slow it down and blow it. Up. We're gonna make it bigger. <laughs> we're gonna get some graphics. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's a good bit. That's a good bit, Larry. Isn't it funny though with society nowadays? Like, I do think with social media, and it's way harder to raise a kid, but it's so it's so telling that. She sees the ultimate violence of Squid Games, like not a big deal, which is kind of could happen at like a reality date. That's like something that I'm sure a billionaire is doing on an island somewhere as he's cloning it, right? Like that's kind of real. And then an alien puppet is like is is breaking her heart. Like it's oh, so yeah. I mean the, the fact when you have a really well tell story, well told story. That's just you know that uh, uh, you know li uh, proper music and juxtaposition uh, of a simple story, and, uh, and then of course you've got that kid. Was it Henry Thomas? I mean, this kid should have been given an Academy Award. He what should he have. He should have. At five years old, yeah. he's crying. He's connecting to the puppet like it's real, and and Spielberg ca uh, captured that. And then of course now watching it now, how many years? Thirty years later, the scene. He's obviously using his own father's passing and he's using it as like this, like a metaphor of for all, like, 
like what you go through when you say goodbye to someone and uh, when they die, mm -hmm. like he's putting that in and it is like that sequence goes on for 12 minutes. And that's mm -hmm. like the closing of the, you know, when he, when ET dies and he closes the, the coffin in F, you know, it's hard for, it's, and, and, and then the, then the heart light comes on, but that thing takes forever. It's really drawn out. And it's so gut wrenching. And it, and it's almost as gut wrenching as it is in real life. I mean, it's when you're saying goodbye to a loved one and you're closing the lid on the coffin, like like. And it is he doesn't hold anything back, and it it reduced her to a puddle. I don't think she's recovered, and I didn't remember the movie when he just threw the ball to see if he was there. I think I started crying then. Yeah, <laughs> like, it was really got me. It's a well made movie. Maybe it was movie. a pandemic. Well -made movie. And I can't believe how bad the. Uh, puppetry is though I and mean, now looking at it you're That's like not shit all over the puppetry. you're like wow well, is nowadays i'm surprised she got through it because i've tried to show my daughter some stuff and their attention span and it's shown that it's so i mean you know on youtube or if you if you don't get someone's attention in three seconds they're like that they just scroll and scroll i grew up there were three channels i mean you watched whatever you put on you're like yeah well, i guess we're watching this now yeah. they're like gone so i'm surprised she even got through well, no but to your point, like he's literally blown an Irish, like that just started yelling, we can't watch a movie. Like we can't even watch a movie as a family because she doesn't. So we have to literally like be like, we'll give you Kit Kats and TikTok and Robux if you just sit and watch a movie. And then, he, and then I went and did a show and I was like, what'd you guys do? He's like, I showed her Midnight Run. Yeah. <laughs> She barely got through it. She but I was barely impressed got that they midnight. got, they got yeah. through it. Yeah. She did. Did you get a little surf and turf going? I'm like, <laughs> you should order the lobster. We'll get a little surf and turf. Yeah, you get a six pack of O'Doul's and yeah. some Chick fil A. But you know, like, I, I had to explain the mafia. I had to explain. That was kind of know, a mistake. Yeah, yeah she didn't understand yeah. the mafia. It was too much. You don't have a son. And not to be sexist, but it's like, I don't want to see Midnight Run. She, uh, yeah. Anyway, so I have to pick and choose because I have all boys, so I have to be very careful and watch anything that comes out first. And if there's any character that could be construed as me in an imagination, and there's violence towards that character, my children gravitate that and then beat me. So I have right. <laughs> How old are your kids, Jason? Uh, I have a six-year-old son and twin three-year-olds. Oh my, oh my god. god! No, you're the hero of this group. My god! How are you? Oh my are God. you? How are you ambulatory? I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> you're awake. You're I'm amazing. Actually, I'm actually this. I'm this is actually just a virtual avatar. The old, other me is in a coma. It's a hologram. Just, I'll come yeah. over and babysit so you can just stare at a wall or take a walk if you want. Our, yeah. We yes. actually need a new babysitter. The last one they drove off. We have one for you. We have. That's one. actually true. The babysitter drove off and just was like, "I can't. It's not." Was it because she discovered that one of your children had lice? Because that's what our millennial babysitter did. She goes, Wait, "I don't. What? I can't do this." Yeah, she and she just out. left. She just walked out. Because at one point, our kid was getting lice like, every week. Every like, week. It was not disappearing. It was just, she was disgusting. It, we didn't disgusting. know where it was coming from, but it was like there coming was, from because she's like we didn't know scissoring other girls in class every week. We would like, yeah. we would go to the place and get rid of the lice, <laughs> and and then when she'd come back from school, she had the lice. Well, what the hell is she doing? Like, how are these damn things growing? And anyway, this uh, the last time we saw this babysitter, I mean, we had a party. It was a party. It right? was a party. I was throwing and a party. It was party. my birthday party. It was your birthday party again, the birthday and theme. She was in the bath with him and she went, sorry. She's like, Fielding, I found this. And she comes As out with it. As if it was like an atom bomb. And she goes, I can't deal. And she walked out of the house. Just walked out. <laughs> yeah. And you know what, Sophie? I hope you're listening. I don't know when babysitters started getting twenty dollars an hour, but that's apparently what's happening. Oh, and no, they're paying more. They're paying twenty five to thirty but we an hour, and they don't like even pick up their own. Place. They don't clean. No, they don't do light cleaning. I was a babysitter. I couldn't lay my head on a pillow had I not done a walk through and a scrub of the kitchen. That's what you do. Yeah. I mean, I'm not coming back from my torture basement seven minutes set to a disgusting kitchen. Like clean my kitchen. I have a question for you. Since you guys are both East Coasters, um, are you in the same boat as I, where you have no family out here? Like, no. When anytime somebody watches my child, we're we're paying them to watch my child. Yeah. Well, my brother's out here, but he doesn't watch my child. He's kind of useless. Yeah. We love Jerry, but no, he's, my brother he's a... watched her one night. I think we tried to get away yeah. when she was three Four, or three. no three. We were like, listen, can we? It's our anniversary. Can you guys? We're gonna go to a hotel, and he goes fine, and then. 
Ellis just like manipulated like, them. Nobody and, slept. And they haven't recovered from that. And it's been six there years. There was like, everyone ate like seven <laughs> muffins. And they're like, I think we went to bed at one. Then she was up at three as if she was a He's newborn. Like, and he like, called so me an emergency call. He's like, she won't go to bed. So, what do I do? And I was like, so, dude, just put her in the bed. Oh, Jamie, you Jamie, you're so right. Because the people who have family, even just someone like a cousin or an aunt or both, it just, it makes such a difference psychologically. And we don't have that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Our neighbors the other day, I was like, "What do you? Where were you guys all weekend?" They go, "Oh, we uh, we went to Mexico for the weekend." I go, "You did? Who watched what? the kids? Oh, the grandparents came by and watched the kids and like, yeah, oh, that was pretty great. Life is so much easier but that even, I didn't have to like even if ven her, Venmo a hundred dollars to have a dinner that I wasn't yeah. didn't even enjoy with my husband. I would not trust her grandparents though. Mine, my, my mom, my mom comes in every couple months. They're very close. She's a wonderful grandmother." But she doesn't want Not to put Not such the, a great mother. She <laughs> likes it when there's a sitter, too. She likes it. Well, yeah, because... Building, we know, we can see that you're damaged. I mean, this is... <laughs> <laughs> well, you haven't recovered from Christian Leitner. And you know what? No. I think if you polled most women, they'd be like, he's extremely hot. No, he's not. I would spend a weekend no, in Vegas. He's an asshole. I liked him now, and I liked him then. You're the girl who goes, I can't, why, why are all boys dicks? And then you went out with the drummer. That's why it's very after that girl. I know that girl. I went out with that girl. And she was, was really fun. Really fun. Uh, in my relationship, when we go to parties, my wife turns to me and goes, just keep your mouth shut. Nobody wants to hear your stupid stories. I feel like it's inverted with you guys. I feel like you go to parties and Larry's like, seriously, Fielding, you got to keep it. Keep the C bombs down, just less C bombs. How do yes. you you get us on such a deep visceral level? Not only would you do that, he'll give me a note in front of a huge group of people and go, Fielding, you don't know how to tell a story. She oh, never gives the note at the party. Then she just can't tell a story. She well, doesn't understand the mechanics not, of storytelling. You, you're not a natural storyteller. You're not. Yes, I am. Okay, try to tell them a story. No, I I'm, I don't want to bore them, but okay. but but it no, is. No, no, we're totally doing this. Yeah, we're, we're definitely doing this. So Larry, it's really funny you say that because my wife, my wife sometimes will like, I have a couple comedy albums and she'll tell one of my jokes in like, she'll just, it'll come out naturally. Like it's her story. And I go, so I'll just sit back and cross my arms and wait to see her do it. And then I go, you fucked it up. Yep. Fucked it up. You did such an act of love. She's, trying to, she's trying to like promote or do your bits. Like that's such an act of love. Like no, I would feel them. She that's, that's plagiarism, please. Uh, so we have this huge thing. We did it one night. We had somebody on and they told a story and it went, they like begged to get in. We brought them in live. They told this story. The story was the worst. No, nope. <laughs> like, terrible. And so everybody, all of a sudden everyone was like, all right, let's fix this story. And everybody rewrote the story. Oh, and, that's brilliant. Oh, yeah. That's brilliant. And, and it was great. And it was really funny. So, all right, Fielding, let's hear a story about, um, Go ahead. Right, okay, don't story. bully me just because it's your birthday. I'm not bullying. They, okay, show them the story story of when you met Larry and how you guys ended up going out on your first date and who asked who and what were the dynamics of it all. Okay. All right. Do you think you can keep your mouth shut? I, I'll just, I'm actually going to leave. No, 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 no. <laughs> don't. I need the emotional support. Okay. All right. We, uh, I did, had the brilliant idea to mount a uh, classic. <laughs> you couldn't get through three seconds, Larry. You gotta let's let her get it out, and then we're gonna fix it. All of us are gonna fix it. Jamie, Jamie hasn't appreciated my language, and you know what? You're right. I, I've been a little too aggressive with my yeah, language. I love it. Oh, okay. ooh, it's refreshing to hear. Yeah, I, I swear, I was a say, I was a Navy guy. I swear, like a sailor. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't Navy know Navy. Go. That's wow. wow. I, try okay. to, I try to use it. You know, I try to use it like spice. Too much is a little too much. But you want right. a little, little, little love flirt. the Navy backdrop. Okay, so anyway, I had the wherewithal, whatever, the, to put up a classic play, Miss Julie, in Hollywood. So I played Miss Julie, and he played Jean, my valet which was the greatest role. I mean, the Tolucan Times called him a triumph and called yeah. me a valley girl. But anyway, so we do this play. I have a boyfriend and he starts scheduling Sunday morning rehearsals when he knows I've been with Jeff. And so he's like, I want to rehearse with you. And I was like, okay. And so we would rehearse. And then one night he, and because I have daddy issues, which we've decided with Christian Leitner, he's like, come, um, come sit on my lap. It was like just the two of us. Mm. And I was like, it felt weird. 
Then we have a weird kiss. It was a weird kiss. It was a weird kiss. Then the next day we talked and you go, I don't think we can do this. I think we need to be professional. And you know me, I'm very professional. I've worked with Kate Winslet. I've worked with Edie Falco. I just, I need to be professional. So then. I hadn't worked with them yet. I'm telling a okay. slightly enticing story. So then we, we, we I, I break up with my boyfriend and the next morning, nobody calls me, no friend calls to check in, but Larry's the only person who checks in and he sends me a poem called The Panther. And it's a, a panther just prowling around a cage. Didn't feel like it was Rilke. the most- Rilke, a Rilke. It, it was weird. I and I was like, I he he wants to bang me. So then, again, Larry, we go out after the performance. We're at Cat and Fiddle. God rest that soul. It was amazing. And our co-star, our co-star Lizzie Peake goes. I go. I might kiss him tonight, like for real. And Lizzie goes, "You should. You totally should. You totally should." It was like we're in sixth grade, Sweet Valley High. So we get in his little what is it, a Volkswagen? He called baby blue or some whatever. So we were sitting underneath the poster of us on Lillian in Hollywood. He's not doing anything. He's so shut down, uncomfortable in his body. He thinks I'm a lesbian. And then finally we have a kiss and he puts my hand on his cock oh, as God. in our first, oh. our first kiss. So before, I the, before the kiss. Hand, handage. I'm, I mean, wait, you mean hand on cock before the kiss? Yeah, you let, you let, do you led with the, the hand on the cock? I didn't lead with it. We start kissing and then I would say seven seconds later, he, with the, so much hubris and just overconfidence, takes my hand and just plants it on his cock. I mean, he's a big actor. He's with Kate Winslet and Edie. <laughs> Please. It worked. I've worked with Edie Falco. Are you kidding me? I'm surprised it took you so long to grab his schwang. <laughs> That's Edie Falco. What are you talking about? I just remember feeling, oh, are we doing this so soon? Like, and did I, it, you didn't stop it. it. Was the, did the night progress or just knocked out in the car? Or did you drive back to the Met in New York and go out behind it? He, he jumped on the Concord and went right to the Met uh, behind the Egyptian room. Sure. Um, and Jason, no, I didn't stop it. I'm my own woman and I participated in that. Yeah little gentle cop fest. And then we, yeah, we started dating. And then I, I, I do want to button this story. Maybe this isn't the funniest, most exciting story. When we went to the 101, it was like we hadn't had the conversation. I think we had been having sex at that point, like three weeks, four, three or four weeks in. Like I have some principles. I read the rules. And so we were, um, I was like, what's going on? What's going on? And he goes, well, I'd like to go steady with you. <laughs> And I think we should give each other item, like an, each an item that's very like precious or important to us. So he gave me his family crest, which had three mint leaves on it. No, I gave you my <laughs> mom's angel. Oh, right. I got a broken angel. There was a wing cut off and I gave him my gymnastics medal. Larry, do you want to fix the story or? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> So much. I know. I'm, do you want to rewrite it or to how? What's your recollection of this? Okay, my <laughs> recollection is this: I met her in a in a in a writers' night. Uh, every Don't Monday. go all the way back. That's not I am question. going back. No, I think honestly, I th I was waiting for you to start at the. He's starting in the right spot. I feel like exactly. Yeah. I met her in a writers' night. I don't know night. how to tell a story. Exactly. <laughs> Did not start with Miss Julie at a writers' night where literally there's like nine of us showed up. Uh, you know, everyone brought their own writing. Uh, I met her and I went, oh, who's that's Janine Garofalo esque lesbian? Like, I she, no vibe at all. I thought she was cute, and she's and there's no males there, and she has the lead, and she's trying to cast it without giving me because it's a hot guy. You're too old. No, it's a hot guy, and she's like, who's gonna read? Like, she was, and I was like, I'll read it, I'll read it, and she finally begrudgingly gives it to me. I kill it, I kill it. And I got your respect a little bit that night. You were good. Yeah, you were good. 
And uh, so uh, and then the months progressed. She asked me to do Miss Julie. I had nothing to do as an actor. I was like, who is this crazy woman putting on Miss Julie? But by the way, he kept saying, I'm on hold at the Geffen. Just so I you was. know, I'm on hold at the Geffen. I, I was on hold. I was thought. Well, was you didn't get so it. So I said I needed an understudy because I, you know, but I thought she's crazy. Who's doing a classic play in the middle of Hollywood? And we even added an orchestra. It was, we had like violins and stuff. We had a live orchestra. It was very, very strange. And a uh, dark play and not an easy play to do. Uh, but we did it. And I fell in love with her on stage because I, I have acted a lot but with a lot of powerful actresses. But the this one I, was something about her. Uh, you know, she was kind of fearless on stage. She was, you know, and I towered over her. And, and Jean is a manipulative asshole role i mean the guy is basically he tells me to her. kill myself at the end yeah. of the play he basically every night. kills her and you know destroys this woman but um she would not she would always every night she just had a sense of play and curiosity and and really like she did she, she, you know fielding doesn't come from an acting background and the fact that she was trying to do this classic role uh, I just really fell in love with her and her courage and her spirit. And she, and, and I liked your body, and you too. Um, and, uh, I liked your body. I, I, was give, I gave up carbs during the run. But did you tell them what you said to me backstage? Which Yeah, I, I said, what are you doing out there? You're just saying the lines. I said, you got it's got to feel like like dancing like fucking like when you're like you you've got to go back and forth we've got to keep if we we have to have this sense because it's just you and i on stage the audience is going to fall asleep so you've got to he play basically with me. screamed at me and said you can go out there and jerk off or we can have sex on stage like but that, i do believe that that's true you've got to feel it on stage if you're not feeling it on stage then the audience is going to fall asleep right. you've got to have this sense of tension and you've got to. This is the you know. long version. Anyway, I, um, okay. She was with she was with Jeff, and I honestly went over to her house every Sunday to go over lines because I was terrified that we were going to do a horrible production. And I was like, "Let's get off book here, you know. Let's do some work." And she thinks, "Oh, he wants these." And by the way, I me. heard from I, a, I heard from a friend that Larry was concerned about the production. Very concerned, and that was really hard for me no. to hear that for hearsay. All right, I'll let you tell it. No, my brother was understudying me. He watched one of our run throughs, and after it was over, he looked at me and he went, "Not good." Right? And uh, I, but you forget, I quit the production. I know. So if I was so into you and your body. I wouldn't have quit the production. Well, why were you at my house Sunday morning at 7.30? Okay. Okay. I quit because I was like, this director's horrible. we got to do it a different way. So she fired the director and listened to me, and we restaged the entire play. And it actually weren't, wound up being pretty good. And in I'm, the honestly, uh, I'm honestly in shock that you guys have survived as a couple. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love the honesty. I I think it's I think more couples would survive if they spoke the way you guys do. I think most people in life are too afraid to like say how they really feel. Yes. My wife yes. will say things to me now and I go, Yeah, you probably, that's something you probably should have told me when we were dating. Instead of yeah. lying that you didn't want a big wedding, that you thought a little bit would be fine, and then all of a sudden we had like an eighty thousand dollar wedding. Oh really? and Things that she's like, you know, you dragged me out to California. I fucking, I didn't chloroform you and throw you in a van. Right. But I think hey, women, women get more and more self-actualized. Yeah. Like I was very me. shut down and silent. And then I, it's been like a Pandora's box, Mount Vesuvius, because yeah. I've like found my voice with Larry throughout. So maybe it, your situation, people learn to speak more. I feel like he, it's a total turn on for him. Every time you swear, he's like, oh yeah, mama, bring it. I like aggressive women. I always have. Yeah. I changed my scent recently, and he, I have not been able to like fend him off. No, every she's, day. no, yeah. she's made horrible perfume choices the entire marriage. I, I recently say. found something that literally I can't even take off my clothes and go to the shower without him attacking me. What is wow, it? Wow, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's it's actually incredible. I, I it's I, a French perfume that my waxer had me just try after a session, 
And I fell in love with it. Like I wanted to fuck myself. And he's like, yeah, I no, can't I, get enough of you. I've never had this response to perfume and it's blowing me away because it's it's not perfume. It's like an aphrodisiac. We'll do a screenshot of it after the podcast if you want. Yes, I need that for Please me. Please tell me your daughter's sitting just off. The- <laughs> <laughs> Go get the fruit roll-ups. Oh yeah, and she let her buy perfume the other day. She let her buy Aria. A, can I say this? It would tell them it was it's after a, the vaccine. That's uh, why it was after the vaccine. After the vaccine, she let her get Ari Ariana, Ariana Grande Grande Ariana Grande perfume at Walgreens, and my kid comes out of the bathroom reeking. So she smells like a waitress in Fort Myers at like a Denny's, which is fine. And I go, what the fuck? Is that? <laughs> Mid- yeah. that is great. Why yeah. would a nine-year-old really good, really good pancake? Years old, you smell fine. You don't even know what it's. I said people use perfume to cover the way they smell. Well, that's a Baltimore weird. Well, that was the original. <laughs> anyway, yeah. sorry, Jamie. That was the original use of perfume. Is because people didn't yeah. bathe, so they had. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But she's a kid. Her skin's perfect. She smells perfect, and yet she wants to. You know, it's just starting to sound creepy. It's it, well, she loves. Creepy, yeah. she, she lets her put on makeup Whatever. and perfume. Don't you at think nine. after the pandemic, we've all had a different kind of bandwidth and given our kids different kinds of stuff? Because you're like the pandemic. We have to just, you know, relax it a little bit. Well, my children turned feral, so I am just trying to rein <laughs> that shit back in. Hey, Jason, did you notice, did you hear the word waxer in that whole? I like, thought I did, but I was like, no, 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 that that go by. I don't let that go by. No. I'm I'm sexual, I sexual with my waxer. You're a sexual. Wa- you have a waxer. Yeah. Yes. I'm, well, I'm like a small, hairy Jewish minotaur. I'm very hairy. I need to see my waxer every, I mean, really every seven weeks. I don't see her, I mean, every, you know, but. Um, I think it's fantastic. And Larry is very appreciative of the whole situation. You know what's weird? As sexist and demented and deeply flawed as my husband is, he's very cool about like, because I, I have friends who are like no hair at all. And they're like, my husband prefers it that way. And I'm like, is your husband a serial? I mean, I, it just feels a little strange. I don't need, I, like, I don't need to be, a, see a bear beaver. I don't need it. <laughs> he's very, right. But Larry's always been very cool. Like, I like you better without makeup. I don't care if you wax. It doesn't like, he's cool like that. That's probably his best quality. Very similar, Larry. I'm very similar in that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, listen, clean it up. Clean it up. <laughs> okay. A little <laughs> like, like rake the leaves. But you yeah. don't have to, I don't need the full manicured yard. I just, you know, you know, make it look made you know, it looks like- well, you know, a little bit of hair down there is actually good because it, it, you know, it feels, it feels good. You know, the, you're there. Li- listeners can't see you rubbing that's, like you're starting a fire. My hair, in my hair, hair, your hair. You know, right. it's gonna be the parents' lounge after dark. We can't even play this. <laughs> this is. Well, I'm sure I should be hearing it. He hangs out in the. He hangs out in the fat guys' dark web, and they talk about hair rubbing together. But anyway, fat guys dark just joking. Web. You've never looked better. You've never. Oh, Larry, what's your username? <laughs> it's Oreo. Name Larry Clark. He doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> it's Larry Clark. Mine's Jason Gowan. I'll find you. It's Oreo cookie, Larry Clark. I use my real name because I'm dying to find some kind of controversy to to up my career here. I need something. Well, there is a very famous Larry Clark, isn't there? A director who yeah. directs uh, has directed Bully Kids, right? That's Larry Clark. Yeah, yeah. he, he directed the- Kids. Did he direct Bully? Wasn't that Harvey Corinne? I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I I I will defer to you, but I thought it was Larry Clark, but I might be wrong. Some sick movies. Uh, kids very sick movies, movies about children. Classic. Yes. Bully is disturbing. I didn't uh, see Bully. But yes, Larry Clark is a photographer. Yes. 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 Right. So he gets confused with that. We totally got off the whole chain about having children, but honestly, we talked to so many other people about having kids that honestly, it was nice to see a, a crazy couple. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first couple that's ever been on the show, correct? Hey. Oh, really? In the yeah. same frame. Yeah, in the same frame. Um, but the fact that you guys, uh, and like people are going to watch this, and at the end, they're going to go, I'm not sure. Are they going to kill each other or have crazy sex tonight? We don't know. And that's what's oh, oh, mystery. Oh, we, had, we did Tom Papa's podcast, and I was very, I was a little gutted because people were like, they absolutely should get divorced. They absolutely should. Like every yeah. single comment was no, like, why is she no, with him? No, no, no. Why is he with her? No, they were like, no. she's, why is she with him? They, the Tom Papa's viewers did not like Phil. They hated me. 
they and they were like, yeah. "How can you be with that woman?" And was, but then again, they were. They said, "Why is she with him?" Look at the comments after, or it was was it in the moment where people? Uh, Thank oh. God it wasn't in the moment because I think I would have had Did an answer. Later, there were comments on it, and people yeah, were like, later, yeah, later. "Later, it was like a clip, and it was a clip about something we said that was very a little vulnerable and true about our sex life." And he didn't and like, and he didn't like that I said that. And then it sort of like. Yeah. It, it just sort of disarms people when you say like, oh, we went this long without having sex, whatever. I feel like it's sexually charging you guys and that it must yeah. be just a violent, I mean, but <laughs> <laughs> a lot of endeavor after. Um, he's a teddy bear. He said for um, maintaining that spark of, mm. uh, you know, I do remember, I think back to like, you know, when it was so emotional, like dating and stuff. And then you right. get to a certain place of comfort where you're like, uh, you know, the kids are gone for two hours. We, 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 let's, we have a window. Let's, yeah. You know, yeah. See, my, my experience was very different because my wife is basically, personality wise, is Marion Ross from Happy Days, but she's a little bit like there's a secret Catwoman thing going on there. They, so. they do cosplay. They're, they're cosplayers. Oh, that's, that's hot. Yeah. That's how I ended up with twins. Yeah. Civil Civil War Black Widow costumes come out. That was her, yes, the first Halloween costume we were together. But it was Catwoman that made the made the twins. He sounds awesome. Catwoman I like her. Made the twins. She's yeah. fantastic. But she has like she speaks like like Marion Ross, and she's like, oh, Jason, and and like that's just how she is. But the lights like go that. off, and there's the switch that gets thrown. I have a question. Now that your daughter's nine, I mean, in the next few years, you're you're going to be entering the teen years. How? Um, how precious are you going to be or uh strict like i have my daughter's like screaming at me to get her ears pierced today and i'm like no you're not getting your ears we pierced. just did it we just did it they i know my wife like, please and i go no i think they're going to go do it without they're just going to go like the same way you know, accessories and sherman oaks and yeah. you're not going to be involved they, but they yeah. 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 I, i'm like I don't. I want to hold off on everything, but no, no, I, I agree. I agree. We're trying. I mean, the 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 main thing that I'm really trying to stick to that everyone's like, good luck. I do, I want her to have a phone at 15 with no apps, and it's just a phone, and she doesn't get any apps or any accounts until college. Like if I, it's not gonna happen. But I really, that's my. She plan. already has an iPad. But she doesn't have the apps or the accounts, and I think it's the most demoralizing, dismantling, especially for girls. So I'm the, I'm sticking to that. Like if we get divorced, she steals our think, phones. But, she steals but, our phones but, and gets on But the I can't have my child checking likes until college. Like I literally can't live with myself. Not on TikTok, or she's just scrolling through TikTok. She just kind of finds she it on YouTube, into my phone right? And she she'll, goes she'll see our TikTok. things, but she doesn't have like her own account, and we limit her screen time. We try to, but it's like, it's I don't want you to have like Ellis because I think, again, we're so other focused and girls are looking for outside validation in such a crazy way. Like, I don't know. But what it's like it's... putting kryptonite on that. So I think we'll go through her, her, her Google, uh, uh, like searches and stuff. And it's just so cute. She, I mean, she's, she's a like, good kid. She's like Kardashian, she, Kardashian, she, yeah. Kardashian. She's and you're like, up, do you want to fuck the Kardashian? She's like, not what looking is up wrong? what I, what I would have been looking no. up at nine. But you know, she, she is, but thankfully she's, she's a sweet kid. I think we're just trying to like not be helicoptery and we're not really and just let her, we're always like, work it out yourself, work it out yourself. We, she has a ton of play dates cause she's an only child, but um, yeah, yeah. I, one thing I don't want to do as a parent is make a little mini me. And so I, I always wanted to see her natural inclinations. Yeah. Just to and follow then, her interests and, and, and then, passions. And then yeah. follow that instead of just right. like, you know, making her listen to my music. Like, we, cause make we, her my, bro watch my, all my brother, I watch. my brother, like, plays like the Grateful Dead and Bob Dylan for his five year old. And I'm like, does he like that? Yeah. You know, it's like, what is, exactly. find my, out who they my are. My brother raised his girls and all he would let them listen to was 70s rock. Like, and so the mm -hmm. kids, they still, like, now they're fully grown, obviously. I mean, this was a long time ago. Uh, but they're like 30 years old now, and I don't think they understand modern music, you know, at right. all. And they're still, they're in the Steely Dan, and they're 30 years old. Right. They're like, like yeah, let's li let's listen to little, Spoon and Meatloaf, and you're like, oh my god, but I'm Bruno Mars. Strange, but, and, but like, yeah, he definitely was a mini me approach to his kids, yeah. and I really feel like in a way that's it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of incestuous in a way. It's just it like is. this weird. Yeah, 
We you just have to have the yeah. boundaries. Like turning your kids into a date that you always wanted to have or, oh, or create Jesus. a person that you always okay. wanted. I, okay. I don't know, but it is. It does. It feels like yeah. weirdly uh, right. invasive. And you need to let the kids discover. I mean, that's why I love, you know, they need to look at their friends and be inspired and hear music. And then they, you know, and then they develop that kind of life. At least that's the way, you know. That's the yeah. way I'm approaching it. Who knows? I've only got one kid. I only got one. But we're chance, also basically so. just trying to do the opposite that, of our parents. Um, it would be funny though. That thirty year old is probably like fools to the left of me, jokers to the right. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> right. Absolutely. Right. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's so, hilarious. That's hilarious. I'm a huge mute. Actually, music kind of got us through the pandemic. I, you probably like me. I homeschooled a kindergartner and a second grader by mm -hmm. myself because my wife had a job. And uh, we, yeah. I, played, I had a pandemic playlist that got me through it. But we played, we played Hamilton in the morning, like the whole musical, oh, and we had awesome. the American uh, Utopia. But that's at the beautiful. end, so they played like uh, they love Sing Two or they love all their stuff. So on the way to school in the morning, I give them my phone and they DJ. Oh, fun! Oh, that's awesome. You can sing the whole Dua Lipa levitating, like she knows oh. every word of. I'm levitating, and some of the lyrics are a little like I'm like I'm like from the front yard. Or Kid Leroy has one that says like uh, "fuck it all" or something. So they would play this, and then when when that would come up, I would go "chuck it all." Like I would sit over the top of it, so they couldn't hear the f bomb go. Very oh God, funny. That's amazing. No, you're doing it right. We she's like, like go she go to um, yeah. We played. Sometimes I played classical. These recently, I played. I just put the classical channel on in the house, and they were like. What is this crap? I like know, I know. I'll play classical and she just like literally becomes if she's a narcoleptic, she's just like boom. She just goes right to sleep, which I'm like, guess what? That's better than Doja Cat, where she's I literally heard her say, I want to fuck all night. And I'm like, oh yeah. oh, we gotta just shut this, just shut down Spotify, shut shut yeah. it off. Yeah, Lizzo, Doja Cat, but do a leap. Cardi B, do a leap. She, she loves all that. that. Yeah. She walks around going, "Hey, Dad, mm -mm -mm, I'm popping." Pop, pop, pop. So I was a huge Meatloaf fan. It was the first album I ever bought was "Bad Out of Hell" when I was a kid, and uh, I just love the creativity of the lyrics, the euphemisms, and the double entendres that they used to do. To obviously. All they were ever singing about was sex, but it was, I'm glowing like the metal on the edge of a knife, paradise by the dashboard light. It's all sex, but it's so creative and well-written as opposed to nowadays, who's like, <laughs> bam, like, right, dude, right. It's I want to put my thing beside you. Yeah. Like, right. it anymore. It's just filth in it. And I don't want to sound like the old dude, like that's dirty, but that's dirty. It's dirty. It, it makes is. me feel like I need a, personality colonic I, and I a regular like a silkwood shower it is like so wop, wop, wop. there's wop and then everyone's like wop i was like oh dude that's not cool when i heard my daughter say pussy for the first time but it's i was also like the way they it's treat just women. over it's the way they treat women and even women sing about women in the right. hip-hop world which is so demeaning cardi it's b just, i know it's really some because we play the channel that plays epic awesome videos and so i like there's some videos on there that are pretty great but some of them are like Oh my God! Like the oh yeah the rap videos. I know. Like, I feel like a Jewish Jessica Tandy too, but I'm like horrified. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I didn't know where to be that because I, you know, I grew up when I was a kid. We would listen to the Dead Kennedys. I yeah, love really? like a lot of different music, and you know, even the Pretenders. She says like "fuck off" or something. But yeah. once in a blue moon, and now it's like every other song is like. I'm just, I'm just grinding away, and you're like, dude. I feel like Claire and Hannah. Is that right? I feel like. Have you played the Go Go's? My kid loves the Go Go's. I did. I did play the Go Go's, and they really liked it because they're taking. So I thought I tried to get. We have a piano, and I tried, I tried to get Hannah to play piano. She's like, I want to play drums. I was like, Are you kidding me? I love it. But so all of a sudden, I was like, Whatever. And so we had a couple drum lessons, and I thought for sure it would fade. But she's like. <laughs> I'm like that's amazing. Cow. She's she's all like Watts and some kind of wonderful. Did you see yeah. That? Yes. <laughs> you know what? We I just recorded that. I'm I just go. watched it. Yeah. I, it was a low point it's for me on a Saturday up. night. He was asleep, and I'm like, does this hold up? And I was like, yeah. I was in. I was all in. I was all in. It's Eric Stoltz. Yeah, yeah. 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 And Craig Sheffer, who's like a, a watered down Christian Leitner. Craig Sheffer, the best. Oh, God, we're going to keep saying that name this entire interview. You know what? I'm not going to, I may or may not give you a BJ on your birthday, and you should just pipe down. 
It's all we want on our birthday, by the way. My wife's like, you're so hard to buy for. I go, okay, all I, I tell you, it's, it's so easy. I'm the easiest person to buy for. That's all I'm going to tell you. you <laughs> they know, just like, want you to, to get you. I, I tell, I'm telling you, this is it. It's easy. It's cheap. Just You just want I, a BLT and a mid-morning BJ. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hey, actually, I mean, it's your birthday, right? So today's the day. Yeah. Today's the day. Good for you, Lair. Good for you. <laughs> Good for me. Good for I you. I made it. There. I made it to another year. We'll have to get our kids together because, I mean, they're the same age. You're we would love that. I'm, I'm glad that you said it. We're, yeah, we're fourth grade. Yeah. Fourth grade. She's nine. But um, let's, let's put them all together. That'd be fantastic. We got a poll. Everybody jump in the back. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and we'll find a place for the kids to go and then we'll have fun. It'll be a super. Yeah. They do that. And then we have our Margarita O'Doul chip hummus party. You know, I got to tell you, you guys remind me. So when I, when we first had a baby, my wife made me read this book, a French book called bringing up baby and it's a day or whatever. And the French, they live their lives and the kids are kind of an add on. And yes. so what they're doing is there. And then you bring the kid along and you kind of treat the kid more like an adult and the kid is part right. of it. But you don't helicopter and go no. over. She has me read this book and I go, this, yes, this is exactly the way I want to do it. And of course, like a month into the first baby, right. I was like, what about that book? And she goes, oh, fuck that book. That's that book. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you take what you want and leave the rest. You do the best you can. But they, I always try to have her fit into our life. Like, you know what? You come with me to my waxing appointment. I'm not shunting you around like but you need they, to fit into our life so we'll we'll go out and they'll do their thing and we do our right. yeah. they should so, it, you know because it's you know it's it's hereditary and so she's going to be a furry monster just like you and she's going to have to get cleaned up and the whole shebang he's going to be a redwood forest no, Choo -choo got, no, no, no she actually daughter, is very no, little she's not. She's, let's not talk about our daughter's hair she, she, she won't be as hairy as me she won't be as hairy as she me. has a lot of the viking she is the Viking Irish. Like I'm full Ashkenazi, a hundred percent hairy nightmare, but you know, but I did skim bringing up Bibi and I'm, I think we're very similar. And Jason seems to be. Well, looking I was old though, because yeah. Everything is over the top of like, you know, whether it's Girl Scouts or the, you know, I remember the first birthday party, she bought a cake for like 200 bucks. I was like, did you just buy a unicorn? $200. <laughs> 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 Is there a woman dressed like a mermaid in our pool? What is happening? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We've had Anna and Elsa like yeah. scamper behind bushes and like do, yeah. 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 When, when you were in the driveway, pretty sure that was like 800 bucks. Is that about just for a one year old birthday? Just check it yeah. out. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Let yeah. me ask you this. When you let you taught your kids how to swim, I could not teach Alice how to swim. She would not put her head underwater at all. And we had a pool. So it was like, it was essential that she learned how to swim. So we had a couple of people that tried a and that she did not take to these, these, uh, these instructors until finally a friend of mine goes, you got to do swim to Dave. Is it swim to Dave? It's swim to Dave. And we were like, what is that? He goes, don't even, he goes, swim to Dave. And I was like, okay, this sounds very strange, but every, and then I looked up his reviews and everybody said the same thing. Swim to Dave. He's the answer. So we called him and he's like, how old's your kid? And I go, uh, she's what, three or four? And he goes, okay, I'll be there uh, tomorrow. I just, um, open, <laughs> whatever, he's the guy has very little words. Anyway, shows up, he's a man, he looks like he's 45, full beard, very laid back. And he's like, where's your pool? And he's like, hey, Alice, how are you? And he gets in the pool and he basically gets in the pool. He had the most kind of Zen approach. And he told me to take off. Like he was like, okay, like, out of here dad and so i went into the bedroom and peered out through the window and he went put your head underwater <laughs> and she put her and he goes swim to me and she did it like the very first time he said it he showed her and then she just went underwater and then came up and did it and i swear to god i was watching and i was you know was videotaping it and I, I broke into tears i was like how did this guy do this all of a sudden, my kid knows how to swim. All of a sudden, like in in literally one session, she I knew she wasn't going to drown in that pool. You know, see that's how you tell a story. Fielding, did you watch? I was it? just going to say, but I, I mean, I, it was agony. Ag 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 yeah. A little bit of humor. He brought. It was very Spielbergian. It, it was brought out. It was beautiful. It, it was agony, but uh, yeah. We had. We have a pool. 
uh, horrible nightmares. Like I was had like, you know, if you couldn't find the kid, you're like, what? we would sprint to the pool, look at the bottom, yeah. we'd search the rest of the house, right? And we had the, we had a fence and my wife, we had the cargo net cover. So at one, we did ISR. Have you ever heard of that? No. No. Basically, it teaches them to float on their back if they fall. In the oh, pool. as babies, oh, as babies. That's very smart. So every, I went every day for a month when she was one year old and she screamed every day. And I tears were streaming down my face the first day they threw her in the pool. I was like, oh my God, that's for sure she's going to drown. And you yes. know, the woman holds her up and they teach her. And then a month later, you, you had to bring her in like a snow parka, mittens, boots. And the woman just threw her in the pool. Oh. And she was like, and I'm like, I was like hanging on by a thread. And then she floated for three minutes. And the whole three minutes, she was like, Daddy, 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 <laughs> Daddy, 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 Daddy. Three full minutes. And I have it on video. And I'm like, go, she's going to make it. to see the video. That's and she threw up in the woman's pool every day, and the woman had to skimmer and had to get the blueberries out of her pool every morning. And uh, we oh. did it with girls, and Amazing. now they're fish. They're absolute swimming maniacs. I, I want to see her swim. She's like the Aaron Brockovich of swimming. That's amazing. I love her. That's a good story. Yeah, that's, I, a, that's I a great story. We actually, we, we have to, we have an appointment. Thank you so much for having us on. Oh, yeah. Thank you for coming. Um, we will be in touch, but, uh, Hey, everybody yeah. fielding and Larry, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much. Really quick. Where can people find bitter homes and garden? You have the YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel at bitter homes and gardens, and we are on all the socials at bitter homes and check out season two with Dave Keckner and Billy Gardell, John Michael Higgins. We think season two is funnier, but if you want to go back to season one, it's pretty good too. I can't wait to be in season three. It's going to be fun. And you're, in. you're both in season three and, um, yeah. To our new friends. We'd such I a love party. you guys. Thank you so much for doing this. We'll uh, we'll talk soon. All right, everybody. That's it for the parents' lounge. We'll uh, we'll see you next time.